legacy of Vulture, um, Rory and Mal have moved on. No, really. So, as most of you are aware, I'm a, I was a big fan of the Joe Budden podcast. Um, I thought their original lineup of Rory, or not original, but you know the the most famous lineup of Rory, Mal, and Joe Budden were maybe one of the best podcasts to have ever been created in the history of time. I think for the jokes that it provided, for the kind of perspective on kind of this thing of ours called culture in terms of hip hop, in terms of music industry business stuff relationship stuff which again i wasn't that big of a fan of but still their whole appeal um the album reviews the jokes and all that stuff was really good especially in terms of it being like men all going through different stages of their career different stages of their personal relationship to see them all grow together the bonds the jokes the fallings out it was really cool especially for somebody like myself who enjoys having these sort of weird parasocial relationships with people from afar especially when you see if you had a podcast it was really good to see them kind of evolve and progress over time and especially in joe but in this case him being a very kind of problematic sort of figure in the culture to see him finally coming good and maybe rewriting the narrative of himself and becoming successful um, with his friends was like a perfect entourage story right it was seeing in real life then when it kind of all kind of decimated when then when it kind of all fell apart and we saw that at the center of it the villain again was joe and everything that we've heard about joe budden throughout the years from his past relationships to his business deals to just how he's kind of viewed in the industry that it was no fluke that he did the same thing they did to others to his best friends but for whatever reason us fans thought he would never do that he did he ends up firing them or they end up falling out i don't know how the you know the sequence of events goes really it depends who you speak to in terms of did they get fired or did they leave because at that time they were kind of on strike again and then by that time joe did that whole famous podcast where he had all the mtc sound and was speaking um to rory and mo in a very kind of derogatory manner especially when you consider their friends and i guess the business just got in the way and they kind of all broke up then rory and Mal sort of started their own podcast which again wasn't the best but still was nice to hear them hear them speak you know share their views and opinions um i still think the dynamic between the two is a bit stiff rory of uh, sorry mo of course is more reserved he's not the most outgoing and kind of freely giving up of information kind of guy but i think slowly but surely he's kind of getting there and i think rory's kind of really carrying the show with his kind of comedic chops and just generally kind of self-effacing sort of view and humor that he has and then over time it's obviously i think slowly but surely improved especially with the skits that they're doing they're, they're filming um you can tell they've they've really got comedic chops between the both of them in terms of putting bits together and the acting is fairly decent too um and then overnight it feels like if you know i think how many shows they've done i think it's like 16 or something they've kind of done a proof of concept being able to show that they've got the views they've got the numbers they've got the attention they've been able to then kind of translate that into a deal they've got a podcast deal so the same two people who joe was kind of admonishing on his podcast and saying that they didn't bring nothing to the table he's been trying to push them to do their own shows they're lazy basically that's what he's saying it they're lazy they're entitled um have, have now basically gone and secured a multi-million dollar deal um despite not having joe who says he's the best at business and when it comes to this kind of things which is flipping crazy so it says here the implosion of the Joe and podcast happened gradually and then all of a sudden the talk um, the talk cast hosted by Budden the former rapper turned media personality along with Rory Farrell and Jamal Mar Clay had been a increasingly prominent concern among hip hop circles since its launch in 2014 from the delivery of what the Vultures own Craig Jenkins described as a kind of people's history in the modern hip hop industry at its height the show achieved a level of fame to point where the New York Times regarded Budden as a Howard Stern of hip hop and the production also had the distinction of being Spotify's very first exclusive deal originally signed in 2018 that they'll exceedingly consequently have been apparently so effective for, Spear, for Spotify that CEO Daniel Elk would later remark we should do 1,000 of these which the company eventually did reshaping the podcast as a result but, uh, but all that came to a halt back in the summer when Budden announced he had fired Farrell and Clay who had been casting a show from near on the beginning because of a dispute over finances in the way used in in the way things tend to be when two parties are intertwined with grievances what specifically actually it remains a source of some contention from the outside the story appears in bits and pieces a mess of disputes over accounting profits and value respect there was a piece of leaked audio where budden berated the co-host for not sufficiently contributing to the show despite asking for more in a public rebuttal clay and farrell painted a convincing picture of a titular host reaching the app apothesis of a long simmering power trip the whole thing seemed to boil down to the fundamental conflict of a power dynamics and the line that separates the makes a creative partner an employee and a friend 
All of this was, of course, already taking place in the wake of another prominent scuffle, the one between Budden and Spotify, which resulted in the Budden refusing the contract extension and blowing up his relationship with the Swedish streaming service. He accused the company of undervaluing the show despite the benefits of bringing to the table, and now he could uh, make a compelling case that he's done the same with Carol Farrell and Clay. Cued to the present, and both parties have long gone their separate ways. Budden continues to show that the show is no longer available on Spotify. Meanwhile, Clay and Farrell independently launched their own podcast, New Rory and More, back in July, which has been publishing shows weekly today the former um, co-hosts are making an announcement that they have signed a serious stitcher deal the show will now be premiered or released through signed view stitcher and the show will now let's say sorry let me read that again they have signed a serious xm stitcher the show will now be released through the stitcher new more label the first episode is under the new um, arrangement scheduled to drop in November 2nd with the new installments every Tuesday and Thursday. Vodger caught up with the duo recently to talk about the deal and what they're hoping for the show so again crazy in it to think that the, the two people that everyone was denigrating and saying they wouldn't be able to do on their own did on their own i have to be honest after the first episode few episodes of the new show i didn't know i didn't think they could do it either they've proved me wrong in that regard so big up them in that extent um and obviously they've proved wrong for being um dj academics says so, yeah i'm a little bit confused sorry I, um what the question say i'll admit to being a little confused over the specifics of everything that happened last year okay so what did Roy Kamal say straight away yeah no it's not an issue for us that's something you would probably have to ask him but it would be very funny a lot of would a lot of it would be exposed if he decided to do that that's not a route he would want to go i can assure you that said rory uh Got it. Um, let's start here. Where's the backstory behind the deal with Stitcher? Roy says, I mean, Stitcher made the most sense out of the whole group. Outside of them, we met with almost everybody and we met with a lot of people who were just trying to get their footing in the podcasting world, which wouldn't have been a great partnership. With a lot of our outlets, it felt like we were going to push them to the next level, not the other way around. With Stitcher, Mal says, the people here, Jasmine in particular, she's very passionate about the show and the things that they have in mind. It just made sense to everything we're about. Um, there were other offers of more money on the table, but we didn't allow what we're trying to do we just didn't feel the same connection with those people that's really an important part i remember when i was working in marketing and i had the opportunity to sign again it's funny the people that i flipping gave deals to and signed who didn't do anything for me go forward but hey we move we move but one of the reasons why i was able to kind of carry a lot of those deals and or look at the way i was able to kind of seal a lot of those deals and get those conversations even started was because i was generally a fan i came at it with a passion i came at it with the knowledge of these people and what they did and maybe the deal for them was lame and corny but because i was somebody that's passionate and wanted to take part i wanted to kind of um help them in terms of boosting their image in terms of giving them more money whatever it may be they were willing to do that deal um and a lot of it does come down to that like who do i like best? especially if when you're kind of pitching things and you're you know amongst other people who are pitching sometimes it just comes down to whether or not they like you more or not or whether or not you actually get what they're doing so that's definitely a feather in the cap of jasmine henley brown the more senior executive producer well done good job what were the priorities in close in these conversations Rory says we definitely wanted to add some new elements to podcasting I feel like podcasting has become pretty stagnant and little oversaturated where everyone is just sitting up microphones and talking like I am about the same thing every single day it's become like the new mixtape and the new merch line it's just this shit that everybody keeps doing after everything that's happened with the podcast Ma and now sat down and we we're like yo I think we, the only way we can continue doing this is if the, we, we do it in a really unique way so that's what we the big so that's what is big in this conversation we we wanted to add different sketch elements in it different types of interviews different types of people that would be on these podcasts our fan bases are really gravitated towards the sketch stuff and the other things we've been adding there's a live show stuff too though obviously with the elephant in the room being covid we're taking our time with it but as far as um, really bringing live shows together that's going to come in 2022 things are going a little calmer i can't wait for that that's gonna be awesome did you ever consider staying independent the royce is definitely just knowing the past experience that ma and i've had with podcasts and being independent was obviously something that would make sense but there are ways to there are ways for corporations and creators to work together people have spent so much time making status quo where the creators get fucked over and there's just so much easy ways to cooperate and creators to work together luckily such is one of those same pages for us i agree man i think there's too much bad kind of smoke put on or stains put on flipping corporations when it comes to working with creators i think if you have the right kind of goals um and you seem to align with the company you work with you should be fine and usually i think if you're using it mostly as a opportunity to get funding and to also kind of free marketing and advertising then you are going to be okay um especially if you kind of have a clear vision of what you're trying to do and of course maybe having in the back of your head that there is uh, an exit 
strategy or there is the possibility that the show could just get absorbed by the company and taken over is also something to kind of bear in mind maybe you say to yourself hey i'm gonna have a good two-year run and kind of bounce or whatever it may be fine but i think overall um corporations can really add a lot to a creative's kind of creative output in that respect right in terms of you being able to do more access better guests use better equipment like it's just another level what you can do with those kind of dudes and guys and when it comes to those kind of things um Moss said we're not against going independent sure we signed a deal but again it makes sense they understand what we're trying to do i think the whole world saw that mo and i stood for and where our heads were as far as what we were going to tolerate and not tolerate we were not going to just do a deal to just do a deal we publicly turned out more money than most podcasts would ever dream to see so we're not going to do something else a deal is fair okay fair enough and supposedly allegedly according to the rumors on the, in the interwebs because people like to leak these news to make people know wagwan they signed a 10 million dollar deal and they still get to keep the, the the ip of the podcast in so basically it's like a you know an overinflated licensing deal but obviously for the podcast and platforms it still works for them because they can still make a bunch of money off the ads to make that back in a heartbeat especially with the fans that they have rory and mal but they've signed a 10 million dollar deal like absolutely wild especially you consider how again how much joe kind of spoke about how bad they were at business and they didn't bring enough to the table for two guys who were basically looked at stooges according to academics who turn around and secure a 10 million dollar deal shows that maybe people counted them out incorrectly and they maybe are a lot smarter than what they kind of appear to be just to confirm both of you continued your own show so yeah absolutely we understand was it do a spotify ever on the table i mean we spoke to spotify it wasn't a bad conversation by any means it just didn't make sense for us at the time in one of the first new royal mall one thing you mentioned was that you're hoping to do things that weren't able to do an old show could you talk about that a lot of things went to do in the old show that we weren't able to because uh we lacked control looking back um that was the beginning of the end honestly all that started when every time we wanted to try something the energy around the we, we just oh, i don't know despite the fact that this was our show our what do you mean Oh, despite the fact that it was our show you know what I mean and then there are loads of other business meetings that are happening that we didn't know about coming out of all this is a blessing because now it's all literally just Rory and myself having conversations about what we creatively want to do stuff that we want to do, do, do. so yeah that, that's the good thing about doing bad business when you do bad business your bare minimum for good business is just to talk openly and to be like hey this is the money everything that comes in we split 50-50 after expense or whatever da, da, da. you're just clear that's the benefit I think the problem is sometimes people are so used to bad business they don't know what good business looks like so you just keep repeating the same mistakes but i think if you can if you can see what went wrong prior and you just have a base level of requirements of like hey just communicate with me if you're not happy with what's happening here let's talk let's maybe leave certain conversations for the podcast i don't know whatever rules you put in place to ensure that you have a healthy relationship a business relationship and friendship you can do off the back of those kind of things so that's where the blessing comes in that happened with Joe so I'm excited for the creative um, agenda of the show to be able to push the show forward rather than push the particular person forward there's so much we can do when egos are stripped when our actual focus is, is not personality it's a show and that's what I'm excited for oh shots there isn't it shots there I'm excited that the creative agenda for this show will be able to push the show forward rather than push a particular person forward. There's so much we can do when egos are stripped when our actual focus is the person not a personality it's a show that's what I'm excited for that obviously was a shy Joe and definitely a reflection of what we've seen saying on the sub on the Joe Budden podcast subs, um, which I'm obviously a part of. A lot of people said that the kind of the downward spiral of the show maybe ha probably had had started, but we didn't know what's going on behind the scenes. But an early indication might have been when Joe Budden changed the name of um the podcast to from the our name is podcast layer which is probably one of the best tiles for a podcast and he changed it then to the joe button show in it right whether it's called now joe button podcast um and obviously at the time it was a he said it was a branding thing wanted to bring everything under one umbrella to increase their ability to get deals but really if anything it was a it was kind of as a it was him sort of reasserting his dominance that it was his show and those guys were his co-host it wasn't like an an equal playing field in that regard he didn't want to share the wealth he didn't want to share the notoriety it was just like all the attention had to be kind of directed towards joe in that respect and you know eventually that kind of led to you know them falling out as people and i think that's the issue that i've always had with it i think for whatever reason joe just didn't really respect or recognize the uh, 
what the other people brought to the show even people like parks where everyone hates now right those kind of voices together was what made that show magic but for some reason he generally did think that he was the star of the show and people only came to hear him don't get me wrong some people most people did come to hear what he had to say but the way that show was so good was because they all basically took the piss out of each other on i mean it reminded you of you and your own friends or people that you'd like to be friends with right um and for whatever reason he didn't recognize that i don't know why it's just strange when you think of the success of the show and it's quite clear that them as a group was the reason why people loved them but phew, i guess people's egos and maybe it's because of his lack of success in the music industry he finally got some notoriety with podcasting and maybe he was he was really weird wanting it to be true that he finally got the love and adoration that he thinks he deserves as a personality especially with all those other shows he was doing it's no surprise he was gassing himself up he had that show on revolt he had the other show he was doing interviewing guests and shit right the pull up it's no surprise that he thought he was the star of the show in that regard um let's project forward a bit what do you think the show will be like in 12 months hard to say i think we'll just be in a place where we collect as much credit data as possible we're excited to try new things it's their style of interview we don't want to just sit down group people da, 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 da. but yeah good interview um excited for them lot they spoke to him i ran into him but it wasn't really a conversation i haven't seen or spoken to him since my last day at the studio i'm happy it went that way because i had seen him or ran into him it would have been bad news Oof. Jesus Christ it's still tens of, that's the thing as well you have to give Mo credit for again Mo deserves a lot of credit for this because from what I remember of the fallout Mo didn't really have that much of an issue with the situation he was more so standing up for Rory because Joe told Rory to take a break because he felt like his attitude was bad and um, he wasn't bringing enough into the show and maybe it was a bit too tense maybe the conversations around the accounting were getting in the way of their relationship on the show right so Joe took the decision to basically tell Rory to take a time out and basically Mo was like nah why are you telling him to take a time out you're in a position to tell him to take a time out this is our show if he has to take a time out you discuss it together as a team as a group of people and then that's when Joe reminded everybody no this is my show you guys are my employees and then I think the famous line about um what do you say um the podcast business is none of your business or something like that, right or whatever something along those kind of lines but in general Mar basically went on strike with rory like as in support more so as i have an issue with joe as bad as yours he just did it like no 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 he can't if if, if you're on track i'm on strike kind of thing and look what's happening at the end of it him standing on these principles and having some sort of morals and backbone and whatever has gone on to reward him in his way and i think especially in this world at the moment especially with people like dj academic promoting the likes of you know six nine and whatnot it can be sometimes or even just these kind of channels where they talk to these bird-brained girls, you can get the idea that sometimes the people winning are the ones that don't have the morals, don't have the principles. They're the ones that get forward in life the most. But really and truly, if you're a good, decent person, usually um, you do get your just deserves in the end. Usually. Again, it sometimes does happen where, you know, the nice guy finishes last. But again, this is not a nice guy thing. This is just more so doing the right thing because they were friends. That's the thing that's really disappointing about this. This bad business happens all the time when people are not friends or just colleagues. It happens, cool. You kind of sweep under the rug. But when you're actually friends, you think you're owed a kind of a level I won't say respect but just like maybe it is just respect you're owed something that would mean that maybe it wouldn't go as far as him saying those insulting things to the get to, to him Rory and Mal whatever Joe's case maybe it wouldn't go as far as them kind of you know not speaking forever it, there'll be a there'll be a thing there'll be a line that you draw when you're friends maybe you're not friends you kind of step over it you know to get on someone's nerves but there's something that you do when you're friends where you just want to make sure that the person that you actually loved as a friend isn't hurt it doesn't feel disrespected right all that kind of doesn't have to call in question your friendship in general that maybe is a way to go about things probably but again you know that wasn't going to happen but you know again larger to more um you know he did in the end up get rewarded for standing up for his co-host and friend and now they're both multi-millionaires on the way to probably make more millions and if they just keep doing what they're doing not improving in the slightest they're going to be richer than rich but i'm sure they're going to improve it you know what i mean especially when they add in live shows the money and the opportunity to do interesting things is going to be incredible especially with their connections and links so it's only on the upwards and i think as a joe budden you have to maybe look at the situation and think to yourself you know what maybe i'm the problem everyone that leaves that show in some way shape or form has able have been able to get some sort of deal right especially these two guys being the best examples because people always thought they were kind of joe's lackeys joe's lackeys ended up getting a multi-million dollar deal with a pretty established streaming radio platformy kind of thing right and joe hasn't 
still been able to do that he obviously got the patreon thing kicked off because of his you know sexual assault whatever thing he was being accused of before so that's an obviously an issue allegedly i don't know sure if that actually happened but you know people say these kind of things so maybe he's the problem in the end maybe the spotify deal was bad but maybe the way he dealt with that business dealings didn't really help the situation and in general you know they're basically relying on patreon money and adsense and that's it and really for somebody like a joe considering his history in the game he should have more than that to show for it right he should have multi-million dollar deals too especially considering the groundwork that he led he kind of laid for people especially in the hip-hop scene to thrive and succeed he really should have a bag um at the end of this but you know bit bad business deals having a stinky personality um fucking over your friends again uh, the, the, m part of me thinks as well it shouldn't really matter in, in general but part of me wonders if the fact that he fucked over his close friends in such a public way has maybe made people you know um hesitant on doing business with him in general i wonder i don't know what happened behind the scenes because he could say you know i've got apple on my line da, da, da. but i wonder if that's actually affected him going forward Cause i know he's got the facebook deal recently do that audio kind of clubhousey kind of thing but i don't know man i don't know but anyway Big up Rory Amal, very, very well done. Um, the picture and the article is fucking banging as well. They can use that for until the end of time in it that this person took. Like, that was fucking cool. So, yeah, big up them. Big up them.